morning, nature. Good morning, bodies. Good morning, brains. Good morning, hell. Good morning, heaven. We are playing Injustice 2. But before we get into the grind of conditioning, of execution, of meter management, of matchups, we're going to get into Blue Beetle so deep that we're reading the first comic of all time with this three-dimensional beautiful font in the 1960s. Now the point of this, I'm trying to learn a character a month and I basically feel like since this is a comic game, it would be kind of cool to learn about the characters you're playing as so when you're kicking ass with them, the punches and kicks mean have a little bit more backbone and meaning to them. Rather than just tear horroring and just playing for that. Now this mummy, I mean this comic is called, it's 12 cents by the way, back then. Blue Beetle and the giant mummy who was not dead as opposed to being dead. This man's all flushed in the face. She's flushed, the cop's got his little stress ball as he's shooting the mummy. But the blue beetle with his cool shade is coming in and knock this mummy out. Page one. Got some music. Got some Frankenstein stuff for the kitties. Chapter one. Blue beetle and the giant mummy who was not dead. This was the forbidden tomb. The ancient evil hieroglyphics deciphered by Dr. Don Garrett and his beautiful... Egyptian associate, Professor Larry Hoshid, promised horrible death to any trespasser into this room, the place where the evil pharaoh had been interred. Now, the very earth shook beneath the American archaeologist's feet. A fiery white light flashed through the thick stone walls. Larry Hoshid screamed, and sought refuge in Dan's arms, the manliest arms of man. They had both seen the terrible sight, the mummified body of Kaer Ve, the evil fair of the old kingdom, dead since approximately 2550 B.C. Before Jesus Christ, amen, was grown before their eyes. They saw the heat waves ripple over the mummy. They saw the great creatures stir, and then unmistakably, it was erect, and turned toward them. Was this the prophecy come true? Were they to die now at the hands of the giant mummy who was not actually dead? And you can see how erect the mummy is, and how erect Dan is. Pulling in the waist of Dr. Hoshi. Grinding on that calf, that gastrocnemius, a little titty pressure. Hey, hey, Don, Don, it would destroy us both. I warned you against opening this crypt. Don't despair, Lurie. This blue scarab, the beetle, has the power, and it will triumph over evil. Flashback. In New York, the directors of the museum had conferred with Dr. Daniel Garrett, leading archaeologist and authority on ancient Egypt. Now, Dr. Garrett, we thought you would be delighted to lead the expedition on to investigate the presence of pre-dynastic treasures at Egypt al -Il. Excuse me, Sam, just puffing my pipe. Normally, I should be. But you probably have not been kept informed concerning the nuclear devices, which were already exploded in this area. General amateur hits, not amenable to reason. And I think it would be foolhardy to proceed with research at the area at the time. Now, the Catholic or pre-dynastic treasures had been there for 6,000 years. A few more years won't make much difference. Now let me go home to my kitty cat. At his abode that evening, Dr. Garrett was studying his notes on King Ramses II, whose two huge spayos dedicated to Re, Hakat, and Hathor overlooked the Nile. His idea of a relaxing evening at home. 
Knock, knock, ding, dong. Who can that be disturbing me from my Ramses the second with my lotus flower and little kitty cat? Let me get up from my little angular rest seat in my robe. Oh, Dr. Daniel Garrett, I am a Professor Larry Hashid. May I enter? Oh, I would rather enter you. I mean, I mean, I'd rather you, uh, bah, bah, with a sinus movement, Laura Sheed shed her cloak, and you are garbed as a dancer in the court of Abydos, 1305 B.C. Is there any significance? Mow, mow. If I may, I shall explain, triple X explain, as her little green collars. Bracelets, a little Egyptian necklace, belly dance, no belly button, that's a defect from birth. And her little hip saint line and her card piece, maybe she's a dude, we don't know. Oh, please, please come in. I've been rude those other times when you attempted to see me. But I was busy and you forced me to this extreme. To use what you Americans call an advertisement. Of that booty. Where your museum wishes you to dig is located the Mastaba Kaifre, the evil pharaoh. I have deciphered the hieroglyphic writings found there, and I must warn you. I hadn't really planned on leading this expedition, see? Until now. Professor Hashid, it is the museum's practice to employ an Egyptian contemporary. Will you assist me in my pants? I mean investigations. Oh, Dr. Garrett, I shall be forever in your debt. <sighs> right there on the cheek, on the inframandibular area, on the masseter muscle. Making his jaw drop, making that masseter weak. You see that? That kiss, uh, unclenching that jaw, uh, double diagonal eye, uh, eyebrow arched, uh, glabella creased, uh, let's go. Let me put on my finest suit away from my classy robe to my, what are those? The tomb was located in the ancients and I called the upper kingdom with hot, broiling desert stretching out on every side. Those are the ruins from Z Dynasty. On that site, the evil pharaoh built his mastaba. With my pants erect and my boots strapped, we dig here. Oh, this is indeed the site of the tomb of Ka F. Re. Oh my gosh. We got our first advertisement for children. For male pollen baldness is the cause of the great majority of um, cases of baldness and excessive hair loss, for which neither the word treatment nor any other treatment is effective. And then we got little combat soldiers. You got your medic. You got your bayonets. You got your military men. You got your grenades. You got your runners. You got your kneeling prone fighting running figures. Battle flag, helmets, pistols, rifles, ammo, belts, machine guns, and other pieces like blood and guts. Just a little 25 cent poster stanch and a dollar and you get them. Oh. Oh, wake up in the morning to some blue beetle. Digging for the tombs of ancient kings must be done with patience, loving care, the workers must be supervised and restrained so that no priceless relic may be damaged through haste on the part of those unearthing the ruins. So you must give loving, restrained care. Yes. It is the tomb of Caif Re. There is a portrait of that evil pharaoh. He was reputed to be allied with the powers of darkness. A cruel, sinful man eager to bring pain and death to those around him. You are super that's actually Egyptian language. It's a fact. You are superstitious, Professor Hashid. Oh sorry. You are superstitious, Professor Hashid. Silly silly woman of the nineteen sixties. 
You need a change. Will you be will you dine in Cairo with me tonight? Uh, yes, Dr. Garrett. But I will not have dinner with a man who calls me Professor all evening. Can you not say Larry? Try it. What's she looking at? And then he pulls her attention by her hands. Very well, Lurry. And we'll have a wonderful time. Oh, Dan, it is so very depressing here. I don't feel horny. Later, I'll make you feel horny by becoming a pilot in my pink and green flight plane. Later, Dan, an accomplished pilot, along with archaeologists, lifted the aircraft expeditions from the makeshift runway. Meow. Meow. You look lovely, Lur Oh, sorry. You look lovely, Laurie. You look lovelier with less... I mean, in less than 30 minutes, we will be in the most expensive restaurant in Cairo. Dan! Dan, look out there! How many they? Long-range missiles! Well, it looks to be nuclear warheads! Who has nuclear fucking warheads in this part of the world? What side of the border is that, Laurie? Whoops, that was close. Got to run for it. Uh -huh. I'm going back, Ken. No, you crazy motherfucker. They'll kill us both. I was afraid you'd be dead. They would be here. I was afraid they would be here. They? You have an idea who's down there like that, shooting at me with the nuclear weapons and whatnot, cleaning them out, click, clap. You know too, Dan. General Amihotep. Descendant of a mighty ruler of Egypt is in command there. It is not in any country's land. It is disputed territory. <laughs> and without value. And he so why dispute it? And he is using it from this unwanted wasteland. He dreams of conquering the world. He is mad and we shall be dead if we attempt to deal with him at that place. Now as you can see here. Dane Garrett is giving him the I don't give a fuck what you saying to me right now. Nuclear warheads, stop. Flight planes, stop. Evil mummies, stop. Of a descendant of a mighty ruler. What's his name? A hemotep or whatever? Stop. My name is Dan Garrett. I'm giving you the most stoic face a man has ever seen. Thin-lipped, eyebrow arched, dead-eyed, straight. What you saying to me mean nothing. Stop. I'm going to mop all individuals with nuclear warheads. Stop. But first I'm going to eat. In Cairo, at the Syrian Oasis, a restaurant famous among gourmets in all of lands, Lurie and Dan prepared to enjoy a feast, but then someone got to interrupt his mojo swag. Look at this little leg position. You know he pulling that T strong. Damn, look at his general Amiotep. Fucking idiot. Idiot. If I would hurt, I would have you crushed by heaven's stones. Be gone and do not attempt to throw me again, you damn idiot. Dad, please don't get him mad. He's ruining our dinner with his bad manners. And I want him to say a few words about his machine gunners, too. Excuse me, Larry. My fist cocked. I'll put some sense into his fool, some sensibility into his bald scalp. He should be reading about. He should be reading about male powder and baroness, as they were advertising here. This is for Amihotep. I'm just gonna give him that piece of information. Uh, are you Amihotep? You know the evil dude throwing missiles at me. You have a camp near the oasis of Al Bazir? He doesn't know I'm cocking my fist. The move you were watching, I mean, I'm probably not your fault, now you offend me. Shall we to Abraham, great one? <laughs> Her name had my man to match, too. General Amihutep stepped close, a small smile on his sensuously cruel mouth. So sensuous. He lifted his arm to strike Dr. Dan Garrett. And Dan Garrett suddenly exploded. Hold him, he is... Police General is... Uh, hold him, he is... Man, punch you in my... <coughs> <coughs> Jesus, that punch hurt. 
Police, General Sake. Hurry, Dan. The General has great influence and authorities here. Don't you come back here, now. Shut up, bitch. A thousand unjust to the officer who kills Dan Garrett. Bam, 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 bam. Boom. Cease fire. We have no authority to fire upon those people. Honey bun, let's get in my plane and drive off. Even because I don't have no car, but I got a plane. I leave off with a bang. Now, back to my awesome parachute pants. Let's investigate this tomb, you know? Let's get some little midnight, I mean late night sleep, though. And in the morning, back to work at the Mastaba Kfre. Oh, Dan, this tomb ha Oh, sorry. Oh, Dan, this tomb has an evil smell. I have worked in other excavations, but never has my flesh crawled with fear as it does now. Very interesting, Larry. Very interesting. But... We are scientists. The curses of the ancient pharaohs have no real power. Yet we, who should know better, are as frightened as the most ignorant workmen. Come, let us smoke out the spirit, Kaif Ray, and stand in my glorious pants. Did you know to us, Dan, just before we started down these steps, all the workmen dropped what they were at and watched us? Something did seem odd, now that you mention it. <sighs> Only a moment of time had passed when they stepped out of the stand, looked, they saw. They're running as though their lives depended on it. <laughs> Get away from the white man. I'm not restrained anymore. Get away from his loving care. I've never seen anyone that afraid of a ghost story before. Huh. For them to run is understandable, but they're running pretty far away. Even the paintings on the wall are... Eva. Oh, look, there's a sacrificial altar. Those jagged teeth and jagged eyes, these crooked eyes, these face of Eva. Dad, he couldn't have been a giant. Looks like he was eating something with that blood. Look how big his statue is. No, of course not. This is Kai Fri held ceremonies here. He spoke from behind the statue, and his people believed him to be greater and more evil than ever. He was the actual mummy of Kaifre. See, it is on the sacrificial altar. Look at that beautiful scarab, though. Carved in perilous, precious stone. What's this lever? What's happening? He touched the lever so awfully engineered and constructed that it still moved 4,000 years after it had been built, and sunlight flooded down upon that slab from a slit high above. Dan, let's leave this place and close this tomb. Our device. You hear that noise? Dan, this inscription says that Kaifri will live when the white hot light touched him again. You're pretty hot, you're pretty white, don't touch him now. White hot, the sun? An atomic blast. Lori! This blue scarab resting on the evil mummy all these centuries, standing sentry duty, guarding the evil lying here, or acting as the jailer, Kaif Ray, holding him a prisoner here in his tomb. And the instant the blazing blue beetle touched Dr. Dan Garrett, he felt the change, he sensed the power of the jeweled scarab, felt the limitless strength in himself. When he held that stone, my pants became more mighty than ever, and my shirt became more glorious in its yellow gleam. I feel it. The power. Incredible power. And it is mine. Mine to use. And I hear voices whispering down through the centuries. I love you. I want to become the century. Defeat the ruler of the century. Ah. He dreamed a dream, standing there with the ancient glowing scarab. Dr. Dan Garrett was suddenly transformed back in time to the most magnificent of the great and good pharaohs. Behold me, man of the 20th century. You have discovered the great power of the scarab, the sacred scarab, the sacred blue, sacred blue, bleedle, beetle is yours so long as you use the power wisely. And wear your underwear tight. 
and have your serrators posterior and anterior glorious. What's this called? Oh my gosh. You're uh, in the thumb. I forget what it's called. The, not chromium. Your, your thenar, your, your greater thenar? Your the thenar eminence. And your thenar eminence is as bright and bold as ever. And your polycus, halicus is a polycus. I think, is polycus thumb? Or is that toe? That's, yeah, hands, polycus. And your polycus is as mighty as all. Beware of the white hot light, for this is the beginning. Excuse me, Pharaoh, for these glasses are the beginning. Do you understand me? All straight face. First of all, where did my man Dan get these glasses? I guess they came from the ancient ancestors of badassery. God damn, you're looking fresh, bro. This pharaoh looking lame as fuck, and you looking fresh as fuck in your blue man suit. Then the dream was ended, and Dr. Dan Garrett heard a sound of his own century. The sound of a jet bomber close overhead. What is it, Dan? I know now about the white hot light up there above us. A modern jet bomber is carrying a hydrogen bomb. We've got to find shelter. How do you know that, Dan? <laughs> Don't ask me why or how, but while I'm holding this blue beetle, I can look upward through solid rock and stone, and your shirt, and see that plane, and I can see inside the plane, and your shirt, the great bomb they're about to drop directly upon us. Then we'll die, Dan, a direct hit above us? No, Dan, we'll die, a direct hit above us. Inside those great doors is a lead-lined tomb Kai Fran built. We're going in there. Lurie staggered back, plus stagger, ready to be punished. Not even punished, she's ready for more attacks to be thrusted upon her. For before her eyes, Dr. Dan Garrett had ceased to exist, and the blue beetle was born. A word from ancient Egypt sprang from his lips, and Kajda! Crack! <laughs> Dan, I can't believe that I'm dreaming. Get ready, the hydrogen bomb is about to explode. The course of the tomb of Kaifre is about to come true. I'll be back. And that is the end of chapter one. Whew. All right, Dr. Dan Garrett, badass extraordinaire. Let's play some Injustice and kick some online ass as the Blue Beetle. Now where is my, where is my Elgato? Did you guys like the Blue Beetle first comment? Comment in the section below, we can talk about it as I transition streams.